Hey, fifth grade, welcome to another day of learning. My name is Ms. Hall and I'm a fifth grade reading teacher at William Fox Elementary School. Today we are going to be finishing up talking about theme. So for today's lesson, you're going to need a pencil or something to write with, a piece of paper, whatever device you are watching me on, and a positive attitude. Let's have a great day of learning. All right, so this week we have been talking a lot about theme. The theme is the lesson, message, or moral the author wants you to learn in a story. Theme can also be the heart of the story. So today's learning intention, so our goals for today are I can identify the theme of a story. So that's going to be the first thing you will be able to do. And then I can create a story with a theme. So those are the two things we are going to be working on today. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. All right, so it is our fifth day of theme. All right, and today to wrap up theme, we reviewed our key vocabulary. So we talked about what theme is. We are going to review how to identify theme. We're gonna watch a short video and then we're gonna practice with a short story. All right, so this is the chart we have been looking at all week. So when we are finding theme, there are three steps we can do. So the first thing we do is we summarize our story. So we summarize that common text and we ask ourselves those key questions. Those include, what did the character learn? How did the characters change? And what ideas stick with you? So those are the three questions we have to think about when we're trying to identify the theme. The second step we do is we make a list of our thematic topics. So I have a lot of our thematic topics listed back here on our chart. We've talked through a lot of those topics. We know that those topics aren't limited. There's a lot of thematic topics, um, but that would be your second step, would be to list different topics relating to the story. And then your third step is going to be choosing one of those thematic topics, and you're going to expand on that. So you're going to use the sentence starter, the author believes, and then you're going to explain what the author believes based on what they wrote. You need to make sure that you're remembering to use text evidence. So that is your final step for identifying the theme. All right, so the first thing we're, or the next thing we're gonna do today, um, you probably watched this video on Monday if you did the homework assignment, um, but we're gonna go ahead and re-watch this vocabulary video um, just to kind of remind us of theme to help kind of wrap up our week. It was an ice cold evening in the city that never sleeps. Criminals stalked the streets, and everywhere you looked, it was a war of good versus evil. Will there be a hero to come save the city? Someone on a mission for justice? Stay tuned to find out what the theme is. Yeah, we got some knowledge you can get right here. We're talking about a theme or a big idea. It's a message about life. The author is expressing, so here's an example for anyone with questions. Excessive pride leads to a person's demise. Now a few more themes you can try and emphasize. In the little prince, I won't keep you guessing. Relationships teach you important lessons. And in Tuck Everlasting, there's that death is a part of the life cycle. Do you get it yet? Many different stories have themes that they share. It could be in this book, in that book, over there. Like in Alice in Wonderland and The Little Prince. Do you know what a theme that they share is? It's that in childhood, you're open-minded. And you know things that adults lose sight of. Don't confuse theme with the main idea. All right, I'm going to pause it for one second right there. So it was just talking about how some stories can have the same theme. So that's something that we have not talked a lot about this week, but hopefully you have realized. Sometimes stories have the same theme. Theme can happen in more than one story and in different types of stories. Idea though, so just in case, let me break it down for you real slow. Main idea is what a text is about mostly. While the theme is more sweeping, so you've got to read closely. Every story has a theme, a universal concept, if you know what I mean. Theme in every story, every story has a theme. Just below the surface, running through it like a stream. Every story has a theme, a universal concept, if you know what I mean. Theme in every story, every story has a theme. Just below the surface, running through it like a stream. Now a writer won't come 
right out and say what the theme is but with the character and plot you don't need to be a genius take batman aka bruce wayne the billionaire the moonlighting crime fighter who all of the villains fear yeah. but every once in a while a truly diabolical one comes into town right. and really puts batman to the test the joker the penguin the scarecrow you can guess that what? every time without fail it's the good guy batman who prevails so what's the thing? think about the plot in the characters heroes villains i see the thing yep, there it is good triumphs over evil let's do another because a text can have more than one theme to discover bruce wayne's a jerk but batman's a good guy so another theme is there's more than the eye. Every story has a theme, a universal concept, if you know what I mean. Theme in every story, every story has a theme. Just below the surface, running through it like a stream. Every story has a theme, a universal concept, if you know what I mean. Theme in every story, every story has a theme. Just below the surface, running through it like a stream. And here we are. This story has many themes, as you can tell. There's always a theme to everything you read, everything you see. Make sure you dig deep. Your story has a theme, too. Every story has a theme. theme. All right. So that was just a fun way to review our terms that we've been working on. All right, so today we're going to be reading a story called The Invisible Boy. You might have read this story before, but we're going to read it again today. So what you need right now is one of your pieces of paper in front of you. So you're going to take a piece of paper. We are setting it up the same way we set it up on Tuesday. So go ahead, fold your paper in half, and then fold it in half again. All right, so you have four different quadrants. You can uh, reopen your paper. You can draw your lines if you want to, and you're going to number your boxes one, two, three, four. So go ahead, get your uh, paper set up like this. If you need to pause the video to get it set up, that is fine. All right, so we are going to be filling out this chart as we read our story. So in your first box, so we're going to do some pre-reading strategies, and we're going to see if we can relate to our lives what Brian, the main character in the story, is going through. So what I want you to write in this first box Tell me about a friend who has made you feel included. So I want you to think about a time that you have felt included in something. So that could be maybe at recess, someone asked you to play kickball, maybe at lunchtime or on the bus, someone said, will you sit with me? So you are going to think and you're going to say, I felt included when, and you're gonna write that in this first box. You can take up the entire box if you need to, or just part of it. That's all that's gonna be going in this box though. So go ahead and pause the video and finish that sentence, I felt included when. All right, so we are gonna be reading this story. So I will be reading this story to you. Um, as we are reading, we will come back to our chart and fill out parts of our chart throughout the story, okay? So this is called The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig. So The Invisible Boy. Can you see Brian, the invisible boy? Even Miss Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathaniel and Sophie. Nathan has problems with what Miss Carlotti calls volume control. He uses his outside voice too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian does not. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their base for their kickball teams. The best players get picked first, then the best friends of the best players, then the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left waiting and hoping. All right, so I want you to pause for a second so we can see that Brian is not picked for kickball. In your second box, I want you to tell me how is Brian feeling right now? So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. All right, so in this second box, you are going to say, so we are tracking Brian's emotions. So you're going to say, Brian feels blank. I know this because, so you're telling me how Brian feels right now. So go ahead and pause the video and get that box filled out. 
All right, let's keep reading. JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk about her birthday party. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so is the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, said Madison. Everybody did except Brian. He wasn't invited. At choosing time while the other kids play board games and read, Brian sits at his table doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons scaling tall buildings, space aliens locked in intergalactic battles, greedy pirates digging for treasure, and superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. On Monday morning, Mrs. Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids look at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet. At lunch, Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? Madison said as she points to Justin's food. It's bulagi. Bul what? Bulagi. It's Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? There's no way I'd eat boogerati. And the kids laugh. All of them, that is, except Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. All right, we're gonna pause for a second. We're gonna track Brian's motions again. So in the third box, I want you to say, Brian feels blank because, so you're telling me in this third box how Brian is feeling. Go ahead and pause your video now so that way you can get that filled out. Okay, so we could say maybe Brian still feels invisible, Brian feels excluded, maybe Brian feels happy because he wasn't made fun of. There's lots of different options. The next day, when Justin goes to the cubby to put his back, put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Justin, I thought the balagi looked good. Brian. And then he draws a picture of himself. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing. You're Brian, right? Yeah, thanks for the note. Hey, Justin, Emilio calls out from the tetherball court. You're up next. Sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds before taking off. Back in class, Mrs. Carlotti asks the kids to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. I'm already with Justin, says Emilio. Find someone else. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Miss Carlotti said we can have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio, let him work with us. Okay, I guess. Mrs. Carlotti gives the, the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in the photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What kind of people do you think would live in houses like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. And then they work really hard on their project. It's lunchtime again, Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 L-O-N-G long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, he hears someone shout, hey Brian, over here. Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. Emilio nods as he makes room for him at the table. Cookie, thanks. Maybe just maybe Brian's not so invisible after all. The end. All right, so in your fourth box, go ahead and track how Brian is feeling now. So you can say Brian feels blank because, all right, so we filled out our chart all the way. So we know that by the end of our story, Brian is feeling more included. Maybe he feels happy because he now has a friend. All right, so you on the back of this paper, so go ahead and flip this paper over. I want you to set up a chart 
kind of like we've made all week. So in your chart, you're going to write the invisible boy and draw a line under it and then make three columns. All right, in your first column, go ahead and summarize the story we just read. So pause the video and write a short summary of the invisible boy. All right, so my summary sounded like this. No one seems to notice Brian in his class. He is often overlooked. Eventually, a new student named Justin arrives at the school. Justin and Brian become friends and both boys begin to feel included in the class. So your summary might sound similar to mine. It might sound a little bit different. All right, in your second column, make a list of thematic topics. So think about topics that we, the theme, thematic topics we've been talking about all week and see if you can come up with a list of thematic topics that relate to this story. Pause the video and do that now. All right, so my list of topics were inclusion, friendship, love, belonging, compassion, acceptance. Those are just a few of them. There could be more. Those were the ones that I listed. All right, now choose one of those topics and go over to your third column. And I want you to write the author believes and explain why they believe that thematic topic is true. I chose to write, write, to write about inclusion. Go ahead and pause the video and write that now. All right, so I wrote down, the author believes it's important to include others even if they are different than you. Brian is not included in the beginning of the story, but Justin invites Brian into his friend group. So that was my explanation of the theme. All right, so that is all we are doing with that story. So now what we're gonna do, I'm going to explain to you a final project or task that you have based on this unit. So we are done talking about theme, we're done reading stories and watching videos about theme, and you are gonna have a job to show what you know. So you are going to be making a comic strip. So your task is to create a comic strip telling a story with an overarching theme. Each panel of your comic strip should relate to the theme. So you are going to get a piece of paper, and you, that, so just a blank piece of paper, and I want you to fold it in half, and then you're gonna fold it into thirds. All right, so it's gonna look like this, so it makes six different boxes. So go ahead, pause the video, get your paper folded, so in half, and then thirds. So go ahead and fold your paper so that way um, you can label it correctly. So pause the video, get your paper folded. All right, so now what you're going to do, you are going to draw your lines so go ahead and draw your lines between the boxes, okay? All right, and now you can label your boxes. So it might be easier to see on my PowerPoint screen. So you are going to label your boxes. So the first one, you're gonna label it title and theme. The second one, beginning slash exposition, then middle and rising action, middle and rising action, climax, and then falling action and resolution. Go ahead and label your boxes now. If you need to pause the video to get them labeled, you can. All right, so let's talk about this. So your comic strip is going to be a short story with a theme. So you need to choose what you want to write about, and then you need to choose a theme. So your theme could be anything you want. It could be that it's important to have be kind to your friends. It could be teamwork is really important and helps someone win a soccer game. It could be... Um, it's important to tell the truth, whatever you want your theme to be. So you would write that where it says title. So you're gonna give it a title, so name your comic strip, and then tell me what the theme is going to be. Then you're going to illustrate a comic strip with five different events. So you'll have your beginning, so what happens in the beginning, your rising action, your rising action, your climax so the, um, or the turning point in your story, and then your falling action and your resolution. You're going to illustrate this every single box needs to relate back to your theme all right so this is going to be a way to show that you know what theme means and it's a way to show that you can create a story with a theme okay all right so that is what you are going to be doing for your final task so today what we did we identified the theme of a story so check we did that with our invisible boy story and then you are doing this on your own so i can create a story with a theme that's what you are working on now, okay? So theme, remember, is the lesson, message, or moral the author wants you to learn. So that is what we have been working on all week. That's what you need to remember, right? So theme is the lesson, message, or moral the author wants you to learn.
All right, so that is all we are doing today. Um, I hope you all have a great weekend. I've really enjoyed doing these theme lessons with you. And that's all I have for you. Goodbye.